This week's video is about the 15 minute rule. What's the 15 minute rule? Well, I'm going to tell you, but it's the 15 minute rule when it comes to panic attacks, anxiety attacks, and taking action on certain things. But before I get into that, please hit that subscribe button, press the like button, leave a comment in the comment section below the video. It all helps the channel, it really does help. And I always try to respond to everybody who makes a comment. Without further ado, the 15 minute rule. So what's the 15 minute rule? When do I use it? Why do I use it? How do I use it? I'm gonna also give you some visualization techniques as well. 15 minute rule. When we are faced with certain situations, some of us can descend into some kind of reactive panic. Maybe not a full blown panic attack or anxiety attack, but the anxiety takes hold and we begin to react. Now, this might be within a family relationship, a romantic relationship, at work, or towards ourselves. It can even be like kind of on the social scene as well. Something happens, let's say um, there are certain triggers that happen, and we begin to go towards this, we begin to feel anxiety. And in that anxiety, we have certain safety mechanisms that might not be that helpful. One safety mechanism might be, I'm gonna message everybody and ask their opinion. Um, that's a very popular one. And what you do is you fill your head with lots of different opinions and voices, you've depowered yourself, um, you've given the power over to everybody else, and it's a bit of a struggle to get it back. Sometimes, for instance, after a breakup, people are very tempted to contact exes, bombard them with emails, messages, why, why, how, come back, etc., etc. Go through their social media, keep looking at their social media. Um, other people, when faced with certain situations, maybe reach for alcohol or um, drugs or some kind of escapism um, as some kind of like immediate reaction. And some people head straight towards confrontation and they go they go in for the confrontation and it's kind of, you need to do this and you need to do that and no, 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 you've made me feel this and you've made me feel that. When it comes to these moments, when it comes to these moments, say like you didn't say something to your boss and you wanna go back and say it, and you're acting on emotion, or you wanna say something to your ex and you're acting on emotion, or a family member, or maybe even yourself, you know, some kind of like um, detrimental behavior that you want to do. What I often say is give yourself a 15 minute space. And if you can't do 15 minutes, do 10. If you can't do 10, do five. And if you can't do five, do one. And literally time it. Give yourself that space as like a cool down space, as like a, I'm just going to sit with this and you know turn the timer on on the phone if you want to if you need to or look at the clock go right okay or distract yourself for 15 minutes I'm going to go and do the dishes I'm going to go and do the laundry and think about it or not think about it, it would be better just whoosh, let it wash over you give it 15 minutes and if you're still feeling exactly the same reactive give it another 15 minutes sorry what this does is it doesn't mean that you don't react in some way that you don't act but it stops the world bumping you around and you reacting against it either by withdrawing or going forward for a conflict or doing something which maybe actually hurts you further like uh, you know contacting an ex and you don't get a reply or you've been ghosted so you why have you ghosted me Da, 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 on the dating scene, things like that. And angry texts turn to abusive texts, or maybe you think your partner is cheating on you. That's another one that comes in. So, and a lot, a lot of people, you know, the ticks didn't turn blue. Why didn't they turn blue? So give yourself that cooling off period. Give yourself that 15 minutes. Okay, and you can reason through stuff as well. Right, what would I get from messaging right now? What would I say? What would I get from uh, going in for conflict right now. What would I say? What would happen? Look at past experiences. Well, in the past, this has happened and I've just ended up hurting myself. I'm more upset, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you get a release, actually. Maybe from that confrontation, you get to release your anger. And then, of course, that becomes uh, detrimental behavior and anger can hurt you more than it hurts the other person sometimes. You can lose your job. You can end up in trouble with the police. 
things like that, it can take longer to recover from within a relationship. You know, if you're angry with each other, maybe it takes a few days to cool off. So give yourself that 15 minutes as a cooling off thing and maybe give it an objective helicopter perspective on the situation. Second to this, if you are entering into certain situations where you know you may well be triggered down that line and you're gonna find that difficult to manage. There's some visualization techniques you can try. Now, some people use sensory techniques, so you can, you know, can kind of flick yourself with a rubber band. Some people like to touch like cold things, hot things, whatever, just something to kind of like change the sensory processes that are going on and um, uh, focus on something else. Some people like to use visualizations. One visualization you can use is to imagine a big like stop sign, a road sign, stop sign in your kind of third eye. Place that over the person in front of you. You're still listening, but there's this. Or in front of yourself, stop. You know, you're feeling angry. You're going to go forward and bomb, bomb, bomb. Red lights flashing. Anything to distract you. Some visualization that works. You can also find your happy place, which might be a waterfall or I don't know, some particular forest or rest stop that you like, whatever it may be. Take yourself there to get out. It's not to remove yourself from the situation. It's just to pull back a bit. Okay, calm those emotions down. Other visualizations are you can imagine yourself wrapping yourself in an invisible cloak of protection. Um, you can pull that around you and have it as like some kind of protective armor and imagine literally as the person's talking or whatever, imagine that bouncing off you. It hits the cloak first or their emotions are hitting your cloak first. So you're protecting yourself. And some people go as far as Kind of just you know they're, they're engaged with someone and they just do that and the other person might be well, what was that oh, it's a fly <laughs> but what you've done in your head is you've magically wrapped a cloak around you you can paint in front of yourself with your hands you, again the fly you know that it's that kind of yeah and paint a what you know a colored line around you or just kind of do something where you visualize just whilst it's going on now that's within a direct situation which you can do, which either is really, really emotional and you've got to be really, really strong, or it's really, really emotional and you're going to get angry or you're hurt, uh, um, or you're going to break down or whatever and you don't quite want to, it's not the right place to do this, so you need to kind of like compose yourself. So visualization techniques and also maybe imagine the clock, start the clock, right, 15 minutes, okay, I'm gonna to listen to this person and what I, how I'm gonna respond is I'm gonna need, I'm gonna, Think about what you've said. I'm going to need some time to process that. And just move yourself around and go, okay, right. And maybe process it. I mean, it depends on the context of the situation, but try and give yourself as much space as possible. Now, when it comes to matters of the heart and reacting, that's a lot more different. That's a lot more self-control is needed. So, for instance, it is like having to be really, really disciplined with yourself and using distraction techniques. So if you want to contact your ex, fire off at your current partner because the ticks haven't turned blue and where the hell are you and who are you with? And oh my God, blah, 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 blah. Distract yourself with something, take yourself for a walk, give yourself a 15 minute walk, go for a 15 minute run, go and do the dishes. <laughs> Try and distract yourself with something. And the last thing I'd say is, Try not to bombard yourself with messaging everybody. And often we message people and we know what their response is likely to be. And then we tend to choose to message them because we're going to get to hear what we want to hear. Try and avoid. It muddies the waters. It confuses you. Give yourself that 15 minutes and another 15 minutes. It's that kind of sleep on it thing, you know. Give it till the next morning. Can it wait till the next morning? Yeah, I'm gonna sleep on it. And then I might actually with all the emotion taken out, with all the panic taken out and the anxiety taken out, I might actually just phone a friend, a trusted friend who I know can be objective and go, you know, this, this and this happened. I'm not too sure how to respond to it. I feel like I want to respond to it this way. And they might come up with something uh, quite structured for you or something quite helpful or another set of eyes where they say, yeah, I wouldn't do this, I would do that or whatever. And then again, Take that with a pinch of salt because ultimately to empower yourself, 
it has to come from you. Consider it as an option and then design your own uh, response. I hope that helps. As always, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, leave any comments in the feedback below. Until I see you next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.